Well, the g- <laughs> well, the g- <laughs> <clears throat> it's black hoodie. I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Well, the fine folks in corporate at Arby's saw it fit to slide in my DMs and hit me up with a $30 gift certificate to try this new limited time offer Wagyu bacon ranch something or other burger and then there's some limited time chicken bacon ranch fries we're gonna hit both but yo shout out to dahlia brand rep from arby's super uh easy communication very friendly and uh thank you for the hookup on this card i can't wait to try this currently in my driveway but i gotta head up town i'll meet you in the drive through and we'll talk about some shit. We'll really talk about this burger. Because I've never really had too many Wagyu burgers in my day, to be honest. And I want to see what a Wagyu burger from a fast food joint is like. I know Arby's keeps it top tier. Arby's is high in my smack list. But I don't generally get like the shaved beef and stuff. I always stray for the signature or limited time type item. So, we'll see. And a Wagyu we go. <laughs> Dad jokes. Dad jokes. Hi, uh, may I get the uh, bacon Wagyu burger? Wagyu burger? Is that a meal or just a sandwich? Um, can I get extra pickles on the burger, please? Okay. And then I'm going to do the uh, chicken bacon ranch fries with it. Do you want it with the curly fries or the crinkle fries? Uh, the crinkle, please. Okay. And then a cherry Coke. Great. Yes, please. Anything else? Uh, two honey mustard. And uh, mayo and ketchup, please. Anything else? And that's it. Okay, it's gonna be 2102 for you. Thank you. You're welcome. 2102, good thing that we got 30 skins on here. So we're coming in with a little extra for maybe another day, a little treat while I'm out in the heat. Although today it was hot, but now it looks like it's gonna storm. All right, sack secured. I'm going to drive to a location near here that's very private it's like a private park area me and my stepbrother used to get annihilated there bongs bongs and blunts back in the bongs and blunts days those days are well behind me but uh i still revere the the privacy of the spot it's an amazing parking location just to have a lot of privacy I suppose i'll show you guys the private locale this is where we used to come all the time back then it's the best so there's this like it's a uh, baseball field and you can walk your dog on a trail and shit here but there's just never anybody here mostly we got one car amongst us as it stands so we good but yeah pull up right, a quick interior look like i say arby's always make sure you got what you need right Every time. All right, let's get this laid and displayed and bring it down for the real thing. I'm ready to see this. I'm very intrigued. All right, y'all, come on down, scope this for real. We got sauces on tilt, right? A little mayo. We might need a backup mayo. Ketchup, honey mustard. Then, ooh wee, this crinkle cut ranch chicken bacon. Kind of poutine -y thing. It's got like a processed style cheese, right? Like a, almost like a, maybe a cheese whizzy nacho cheese. Chicken bacon. I thought that might be nice with a little honey mustard. So we're probably gonna drizz that and then come over and check this burger. Pretty decent size, not massive, but I didn't really want it to be too big. But it does have a nice cross thing. Like, look at that. Pretty good, you know, quarter half. Well, um, probably like what a th inch patty almost. We got the pickle, bacon, onion, lettuce, tomato, and then this bun's looking nice. It's Kind of like, I want to say more potato bunny, maybe not brioche, something of the effect though. Nice little toast, but this is a very nice looking meal. And though this is a ranch style burger, the ingredients of what's on it, I think call for maybe a mayo ketchup bite. So I'm very excited to get into this. All right, it's hard to know where to go first, but I got to go burger first because this is really what we came for. These fries were just an added bonus. This is the, uh, the main event. Once again, shout out Dahlia, thank you. And shout out Arby's Canada. I'll be happy to eat your food, review your food, try all your new food 
any time. You just reach on out, okay? But look at that. They did stack that extra pickle too. So like I said, that franchise in my city, always doing it proper. Got to get a bite as it's intended. And then we might throw a couple saucy bangs on there as well before we try these fries. All right. Lettuce is escaping and it we missed it. But anyways, let's go. Look at this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Gotta get in for one more deeper one with more ranch. Let's see, see what we're truly working with here. on that interior. Patty's nice. I like how it does definitely have that nice crispy Maillard outside. Nice beefy flavors, like nothing insanely unique, but definitely like fresh, juicy, delicious. The ranch is nice. I've never really had, I don't know what kind of, like if they use the ranch that would come in the packets or if that's like a different in-house ranch just for the burger, but the ranch is good. It's working, everything is nice. I might. I don't think it needs a mayo, but I definitely want to try a little ketchup on it. I didn't look at the price point, but the fries are six. A drink is probably like three or four. So the burger's probably clocking it somewhere in the eight ninety nine range, probably just like breaching ten with tax would be my guess. I can go back and look at the receipt in a sec here, but I'm dealing with a sloppy butt. And that is not a bad thing. For me, that was a sign of a good burger. Is a sloppy butt. I love when it sauces out the very end. And that is what has been achieved here. When I get saucy, <laughs> lettuce sucks at the end. I'm a happy man. Just like that. All right, a little palate cleanser. Another reason why Arby's is amazing, cherry coke. <sighs> Very few places where I live carry cherry. They just don't. So Arby's is a cut above for that reason too. All right, let's try these fries. First things first, I am a fan of this clear container. Don't I just like the idea that you can see through everything. It also works 
perfect for mukbang purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it. I think the honey mustard on here is gonna be good. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. Honey mustard mixed with ranch might be a bit strange, but I think it'll work out just fine. And I know for fact that these chicken tender pieces are gonna be amazing because Arby's straight up has some of the best chicken tenders in the game. So it's just, and I know that from previous experience. So if it's their strips cut up on here, you're laughing. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, and interestingly enough for me, I've legitimately never had a crinkle cut fry from Arby's. As everybody knows, you go to Arby's, you get the Cajun curly. I don't know anybody who gets an Arby's meal and doesn't hit that Cajun curly, you know? But yep, the honey mustard works. The ranch is interesting. It's, um, it doesn't have like a really buttermilky tang at all. It's very... It has a real, a real richness to it, if you will. Got a fly invading. But yes, this is nice. My only criticism for this would be um, maybe chop the chicken tender chunks a little smaller for more even distribution over the over the entirety of the dish and so you get more even amount of chicken on like a per bite that would probably be my main My main thing. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Time out. I dripped honey mustard on my shorts and it's stressing me out. Just give me a sec. All right, so for the remainder of this, uh, this dish, I just wanna jump into the music world a little bit real quick. I just wanna give an RIP to Sinead O'Connor. Uh, very unfortunate that she's passed, I would assume maybe suicide, uh, mental health issues, but her teenage son, uh, he was admitted to like suicide watch when he was 17. The hospital let him leave. He killed himself in 2022. So clearly struggling with that, but I also want to say this, I'm not bandwagoning. I know a lot of people come out of the woodwork and uh, fawn and cry over people that they didn't really, you know, it's just like they jump on. I was a true fan. I thought she was an amazing, incredible talent while I was coming up. Very, uh, I just love that she rocked the shave head. Very unique. Um, super talented, obviously. And she stood on... Through her artistry. She stood on a lot of, like, controversial issues. Spit a lot of truth. Advocated. For a lot of unjust things that go on in the world and you know as an artist with a platform 
unfortunately she she kind of suffered the consequences of not being able to separate her art and the music business aspect side of things from her like personal political beliefs and views and maybe some advocacy and championing grandstanding for people who don't have a voice but i applaud her in that um unfortunately when you're an artist your label you know it, it's it's about optics brand optics they just want you to you know say your piece in the music sell the music sell the shows and otherwise shut up She didn't do that. She was an outspoken, kind of like a truther style voice who, you know, received some ostracism and things like that. And kind of reminds me of somebody I know. You could guess. But. your label the industry they will most usually if you're kind of out of pocket like that they'll kind of just put baby in the corner oust you a little bit and maybe put the kibosh on your potential and that sucks and that essentially is her story i think so that's part why she was also struggling mental health wise is like you know in her you know mid 50s i don't think she saw the reaps and rewards and benefits that she could have um who knows if she was still trying to recoup and pay back the label doesn't look like she was living luxury living lux you know because that's the thing about when you get in the industry, a lot of times you're going to get advances and those labels expect you to deliver X amount of albums, X amount of product that you can sell and tour with. And they expect to make that money back and then some, and they, and they take the majority of your profits and you get a shite cut, as she might say, Arlen. A lady of Ireland. Um, so yeah, shout out to her. I hope she's like at true rest and you know, if there's an afterlife or some energetic thing, her and her son got to have a, you know, a final moment together maybe. Or they're together. Unsure. Unsure how that works. I think about it all the time. I stay thinking about eternity and death too often that's a problem for me it's kind of debilitating sometimes uh, um outside of that though in other musical fronts post malone dropped his new album austin which is for, for me post he's like he can do no wrong. i just love post malone so much if there's one person on the earth that i'm truly jealous of that i wish I could actually just be is Post Malone just for his talent the he's just so I don't know just the way that he is all of the his being is just awesome to me but um on the album there's this one song called something real it's the second song <laughs> it's unbelievable like it's unreal it's something it's something real but it's unreal it's the bass is so nasty in it and there's this huge choir chorus and then the way that he cuts through the track with kind of like this intensity it's it's kind of dark and haunting but beautifully haunting and you know i don't know it just that track is so so uh captivating to me it's easily my favorite and there's another song called twisted t which is real real good I don't really have other any standout favorites yet, but I think they're growers, not showers. It's kind of an alternative album. 
there's some really like slow, uh, really skeleton like songs, like just like a guitar, his voice, maybe some, like a little bit of ambience. Very stripped down is what I'm trying to say. And then there's some other like really like kind of 80s California top down suns out kind of jammers and then there's like just some real like almost folk folky i don't know how like singer songwriter a little bit folky stuff really cool and i saw in the comments which kind of bothers me like people are like you know i like his other albums beer bongs and bentley's and stony and I just hate when people do that to a truly talented artist. The sign of a truly talented artist is a chameleon, is somebody who can genre bend and somebody who can push envelopes and experiment in new territories. It gets boring to create the same album over and over again. I mean, you just become a carbon copy clone of yourself and you're not growing as an artist. And I think Post Malone is extremely talented at going to many different pockets. And that's the, the true sign of a true talented artist. And so for me, that's that's uh, what he represents to me. And I, I just I hate when people pigeonhole artists and they want them to have a, like a sound all the, all the time. It's like, why? Like, let them be expressive, expand your mind too. Like, listen, like, let it be what it is. If it doesn't resonate, then yeah, like that sucks. But I don't know, just like expand your mind, expand your taste and don't pigeonhole artists you know but anyways there's there's also two cool interviews with him right now out. there's a zane low interview which is really cool but um even cooler is there's this one on it's called uh mythical kitchen it's like an hour long interview and uh they cook him his his final meal like his death row meal like i've done a death row meal on here but they do his death row meal meal and him and the interviewer each eat course by course while interviewing and having interview questions, uh, his, his, uh, his death row meal. And, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a really good watch because he's a, it's very free flow. That's not like, it's not even really about music. It's just about his general interest in life. And it's like, he's really funny in it. He's super witty dude is very intelligent too like i didn't know post he was actually as articulate as he is evidently in and you know he writes his songs so clearly he's a person he's a linguist and has you know vernacular vocabulary all locked up i would imagine but there's a difference between music lyrics and then speaking and the way he speaks is very distinguished so i was impressed and uh i don't know just a genuine seeming soul but on that note, clearly has like a little more of a demented dark side. He presents very, very uh, like gentlemanly to the world. And he's a, he seems like a genuinely kind person. But then you listen to his music and you really listen to lyrics. It's like clearly there's a life of debauchery behind that. You know, <laughs> one of his lyrics like, all of his lyrics are talking about drugs and alcohol, things like that. And then just like, you know, hot, hot, hot on my dick, hotter on my arm. Or no, sorry. Hot on my dick, hotter on my sleeve is the one lyric I picked up just on driving here. I was listening to it. It's like, so clearly like he's hit, hitting some, some shit and then like hotter on my sleeve, though, like wearing his girl to the club, you know, on, on his arm. Which is fine. It's human nature. That's adult. It's like it's whatever. But it's just interesting how Posey comes off as like this cute gentleman. He's super reserved and nice. Then you listen to his music and you're like, oh, there's the demon though. Like there are the demons in him. But he also writes really like insightful, uh, beautiful, kind of uh, cutesy type music as well. And that's on this album. There's a song called Green Thumb. And uh, and the, out, the, the finale song in the album is really good too. I can't pin it right now. But anyways, that was what was on my mind today. Once again, thank you, Arby's. Great. Burger's good. I don't know. Maybe could be a little 
bigger, a little heftier, but outside of that, the flavors were great. The meat was great, patty's great, everything was great. Ranch sauce, everything, all that. I would get it again for sure. Um, the fries, like it's a little difficult to, to eat. And like I said, just chop the chicken a little more and like sprinkled and divvy it a little more like that. But outside of that, also good. Anyways, shout out to you, Arby's. I've always loved you. I always will. I ain't going anywhere. Arby's gets a bad rap from a lot of people, but not from this guy. All right. Thank you all. Until the next one, eat good, live well. Listen to Posty if you haven't. Stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.